The violence in the American cities, man, it's got to stop. Two friends of mine in New York City, they're trying to get home. Two people, very private people, love being under the radar. Prince Harry, Meghan Markle. They're being chased in a high-speed chase all throughout New York City. Now, many people uh, have denied this happened, including the person driving the car. (laughs) including the cab driver driving the car in the New York Post, had basically said, uh, not really. But I get it because these two, and I, again, I'm, I'm turning, I'm starting to like them now. I, for a while, they were annoying to me, but now they're, see, sometimes when people are in the press constantly, they become annoying because they're trying to push a narrative that we know isn't true like that they were victims of something living in a castle and they had no idea uh, what they were getting in. She didn't know what she was getting into. I married this prince and I'm in a castle and then the press wants to see photos of the baby. I had no idea. Things like that would happen. It's like, yes, you did, you did, you do. Stop it. So we know she's a fraud. She's an actress. She's a cold-blooded serpent. So is he. They're serpentine. Now, And they were annoying, they were annoying, they were annoying, and we were sick of them. But we talked about them because they were fun. And then they started to uh, lose relevance, of course. So what they did was they cooked up this thing, this false flag, where they were going to try to simulate his mother's death in New York. (laughs) This I like. This I think is good. This is something I think took creativity. It took some type of planning. Um, uh, We all know that Princess Diana was killed, probably by MI6. Who knows? Maybe by others. But she was dating Dodi Al-Fayed, and that was a no good, no go for a lot of the people maybe interested. And maybe the press killed her in the tunnel, but eh, there's all kinds of, you know, there's all kinds of uh, inconsistencies and whatever. Who knows? The world's uh, complex. So I don't know exactly who did it. Some say MI6, the Mossad. It's probably everybody's maybe involved with that. I don't know, but they she died exactly that way. Apparently, supposedly, maybe kind of sort of being chased by the press. So Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are now putting out a, a false flag attack that the press was chasing them all through New York City in a high-speed chase that endangered both of them, and it was similar to Harry's mother, and this is a great way for them to get back into the news and to engender sympathy, which is something they're addicted to. You know, people can get addicted to sympathy. They can get addicted to this. This is a fact. I know people that are addicted to sympathy. You ever met someone who's like parents died and then after a while you're like, enough. It, what happens is people get addicted to sympathy. They get addicted to people feeling bad for them. They like walking into a room and they like the hushed tones of people feeling sorry for them because it makes them, it two, does two things immediately. Number one, it makes them interesting because whatever is happening to them is interesting and horrible. So it makes them a sympathetic figure, uh, but it also makes them interesting. It gives their life uh, something it didn't have before, a meaning, a purpose. I am the person that you were to feel bad for. I've gone through so much you wouldn't understand. You could never walk a mile in my shoes. So people really like this feeling. And I would guess, and I'm no doctor, but I would guess that Meghan Markle and Harry, certainly Meghan, I don't know what he's even doing. He doesn't even know either, but Meghan has gotten addicted to this, this idea that uh, this woman is a Hollywood actress uh, who was on a show Suits, and her life became interesting by stepping into this role and then rejecting it immediately and claiming that she had no idea what it was. Um, And so then it's, but then they moved here and they released that documentary on Netflix and it went the other way. They thought, well, everyone's going to feel bad. It's like Britney Spears. We let her out and it went the other way. We're going back, clank, because we've now seen the results. Meghan and Harry thought they were going to come to America. They don't understand America. America has a tragically short memory, number one. So even if they did come over here uh, as refugees, as migrants, uh, we'd forget immediately, which we did. Uh, South Park destroyed them, the Worldwide Privacy Tour. Um, His book, you know, sold a lot, but it was like a nothing burger, who cares? And people just got sick of them. They came, they rented a big mansion in Montecito, uh, in Santa Barbara, a couple hours north of L.A., 
And they uh, proceeded to be annoying. Too, they had a big deal with, I believe, Netflix, and then there was a Spotify deal. So they came to America, rented a mansion, and immediately started to monetize the horrible things they had gone through. Um, and, and everybody eventually got sick of them because it was so crass, and everybody could see immediately what they were both about. They're hucksters. That's what they are. And I love a good huckster. There's nothing wrong with a huckster, but we can see it. It's, it's right out there in the open for everybody to see. They came here, and they want to hang out. And I know people in L.A. that know them, and all they want to do is hang out with celebrities. And I was at a celebrity party the other night talking to somebody uh, about this, and they go, these people are just, it's constant with them. They keep, they were, she was texting the person I was with there. They can't, and no, you can't come. But <laughs> it's, I shouldn't have even been there. But the point is that they, they just won't stop these two. They, they're at the San Vicente bungalows. They're, oh, God forbid you stay out of the Beverly Hills Hotel when I'm eating my souffle. For the love of Christ, so help me God. So help me fucking God. I see that ginger fuck. You stay the fuck out of the Beverly Hills Hotel. It's probably too old school and conservative for you anyway. Stay the fuck out. Um, but they are just like moths to the flame trying to hang out with select, they're like the they're like low grade reality stars that are trying to attach to anything. And I'm literally at the party. They're showing me text of this woman begging people to like hang out. She's trying to get places. It's sad. And a lot of it isn't working. And they're rolling their eyes to me and they're going, LOL. And we're all having a good laugh about this because they're just a bunch of goons and no one cares. Now listen. At the end of the day, I respect the hustle. I get what she's trying to do. I get what they're trying to do, but it didn't work, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people at this party are like, hey, man, you know, we text her back. We try to be nice. You know, she's the duchess, but we've had enough, right? We've had enough of her, and she's, you know, it's enough. So what they did now in New York City, uh, the city um, that I lived in for many years, my home, uh, they've decided to invent a narrative where they uh, somehow are being dangerously chased through the streets just like uh, Diana would have been chased. And the NYPD reigned on their parade too, quote, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex arrived at their destination and there were no reported collisions, summonses, injuries, or arrests, okay? The taxi driver who ferried the couple home after their event Tuesday at the Ziegfeld Theater told the Washington Post he would not call it a chase, adding that he felt safe. They got followed. You know why they got followed? Because their entire lives are about sucking all the attention out of anything that they are involved in. That's why a lot of these people at this event the other night didn't want them there. And they didn't want to be around them at other things. It's like all they do is try to suck the oxygen and the attention out of everything they're involved in because it's about them and their cockamamie bullshit story that the British royal family was running around the house with a noose. And it's not, none of it's true. It's all uh, canard, it's crap, and everyone knows it. And so they're becoming, it's becoming like, a, it's the, she is two years and maybe not even two years away from being on a Real Housewives franchise. <laughs> she may not want to hear that, but sister friend, you and I'm not saying that because you're black-ish. I'm not saying that because you're black. I'm saying that because I use the word sister friend a lot because it gives me, uh, it feels like a little weight and credibility and gravity to what I'm saying. I'm not racializing it. Please don't. But I'm saying, sister friend, that you are two years away from being on a Real Housewives franchise. That's the fact. You're, you're, you're tanking in a major way. You're going down. So they invented this uh, thing where they were chased in a high-speed chase in New York. It's, uh, yeah, because there's a scene out of Die Hard where him and uh, her, the NYPD assisted the private security team protecting the Duke and the Duchess, a spokesperson said. There were numerous photo photographers that made their transport challenging. The Duke and the Duchess of Sussex arrived at their destination and there were no reported collisions, blah, 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 blah. You know, here's the deal. Listen to this, by the way. Harry, 38, and Megan, 41, left the ballroom where the former Suits actress was honored by Gloria Steinem at the Woman of Vision Awards Gala, 
with her mother, Doris Raglan, at around 9.50 p.m., flanked by both private security car and NYPD. It's going to come out they hired the paparazzi to do this, by the way, soon. <laughs> that's the next thing. I don't know if that'll come out or not, but I, that's, that's the next step, is that they hired the paparazzi to do this. But we wish them well.